and are our speakers here? They sure are. Great. Yes, Mary Kay. Welcome. We, I love how we set the tone, the intention for tonight. It's absolutely beautiful. So thank you, Mary Kay. Thank you, Welcome. Miriam, for setting this up. And my two beloved brothers, Bishop Dana, Bishop Bobby, welcome. Thank you, Padre. Good to be here. Thank you, Padre. Wonderful to be here with you both. So, my friends, it's a brand new year. We are still alive. God has something for each of you. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear God really clear when it comes to other people's work that they're supposed to be doing. So, so <laughs> we're going to pour it on this year. Just to make you happy. I've already had, had it. It's already been in all my world. It's like things decided to be ahead of time. So I have so many things already set up and in motion, just like you were doing with getting all the events for the year all set up. It's kind of like, oh, there's the download. Bup, 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 bup. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that's been a first in my world, especially with the intention colors and the topics. It was just, it was a huge download. Usually I get it in pieces, but this time it was here it is. Okay. If people maybe are thinking Padre is going to retire, well, I can guess that thought. <laughs> Here we go. He's in the driver's seat, along with the Holy Spirit, of course. But I actually, I'm really looking forward to this year. Absolutely. Last year had its ups and downs in my world. And I think it actually caught me for a, a bit of three, four months. But I got the juice. I got connected again. And it's like, and here we go. I feel 2023, we're going to outdo 22 and even 21, even starting with 2019, when we had pinnacle attendance, healings, all those things. I think we are returning again, not in the old way, but in the brand new way. And yeah. I, hopefully tonight will be a reflection of that as the bishops and I and our spiritual team who are praying for us, that we just dive into presence tonight. But as can you tell, I'm excited. <laughs> so ah, happy, new year exciting. Everyone. happy New Year. These greetings, so to speak. When I was watching the, the pictures that our community presents were the greetings for the prayers in the beginning, each one has its own presence or atmosphere and you know how many of them were from brazil or was a special retreat or a west of heaven or our private retreats for the community it brings me to those places that god kind of shines light on and just seeing each one of your pictures the picture of yourself and we all have we have our lives we have a purpose in our lives but to allow the holy spirit to highlight in a sense, the, the, the picture that is in front of us, the present moment. To me, that if there's, a, there's something inside of being recognized. And I hope tonight the Holy Spirit will do her work, shining a light. It's just, there's a presence out there that wants and desires, just wants to set on fire our hearts to have us enter into this beautiful place called home, called love, called God's love. And so... With that said, how about if I invite Bobby to lead us in an opening prayer for each one of you, our participants, and those who will join us at a later time. Thank you, Padre. So I'd like to start by just lighting a candle, which I've already pre-blessed to start our new year. So together we're lighting this candle, welcoming in the light of this new year. And if you want to just close your eyes and rest your hands on your heart, please receive this prayer deeply. Tonight, as we open our hearts to a new year, let us bid a fond farewell to that which has gone before us. Tonight, we say hello to our first love as spirit. We say hello to our hopes, our dreams, and we welcome in a new hallelujah. We are here to celebrate this new beginning in and with God, our beloved, our friend, our teacher, our way shower, our companion, and our miracle maker. We say hello to each other as brothers and sisters in Christ consciousness and as a family of faith and friendship. Tonight is our opportunity to say thank you, God, for everything. And from our heart, we say thank you, thank you. Tonight is our hidden treasure coming to light in a conscious way as we claim this in God and company. 
More than ever, it is our opportunity to stand together in God consciousness, to release old energy, to bathe in the new and powerful divine energies, in the all that is and the all that will be. And we welcome each other and our guides and our angels and our beloveds. Amen. Amen. Beautiful, Bobby. I think you covered the universe, my friend. So <laughs> I welcome each and every <laughs> being of light and angels and saints and sages. I think, it, well, I think you know, and I think each of you have that personal relationship with God, with your guides, with your angels. And there's a, a purpose in their attendance wherever we are, and it's called present moment. And when we can tap into that place of gratitude, of light, of purpose, many miracles happen. So I got many texts and emails and people were sending in prayer requests. And it's just amazing. I know probably 10 people within the last week that has gotten COVID. It's just, and those who have also got the flu and have been down and people who are having surgeries. So life continues on, colleges continue on. But as we enter into and stay focused on who God is in my world, because we all need God in a greater capacity than ever before. And to me, this is what our portal called Celebrating Life is going to become this year, is help you in this to enter into this portal of God's love and let it be a consuming fire that it keeps burning, not just in one event, but multiple times throughout the year. Because that's why I think we set up so many for the coming year, just so we can keep tapping into that place and hold that love that we have for each other, but also our love in unity towards God. So with that said, I think we will begin tonight. And I just want to say thank everyone for tuning in tonight. We have a large crowd tonight. And to me, it tells me your heart. You you want to belong. You want to become part of as we enter in or usher into this new beginning. So our whole theme, theme to, for tonight is carry the light. Here's a question that, how do you carry the light? And what is the light? And in my world, it's really, Jesus says, I came to give you new life, new breath. And I am the way, the truth, and the light. So in my world, the, the light represents the, the bigger Godhead, the God who wants and desires to shine light on maybe our dark world, or how many of you have experienced a wedding this last year? The joy of two people coming in divine union, it, it brings light to it. It brings purpose and hope. This light is carries throughout your world, my world. And to me, when I enter into that place of abyss of God, call it meditation, call it prayer, it illuminates me as a person, but also the atmosphere and for those that I'm praying for. So let's carry this light throughout 2023 and beyond. Let's not stop. So here's a question, or James 4.3 says, you ask and you don't receive because you ask with wrong motives so that you may spend it for your pleasures. I picked this scripture because it has such a quality of honesty in it. You've heard many times the scripture says, ask and you shall receive. That is a given. I believe that. But here it's broken down also with the motive. And it's like, because I like to say, well, I want this and I want that, God. And, but it's not without a, a intention. I'll use that term. Because this is just what I want. This is what the flesh wants. I want my Starbucks. There's one avenue. <laughs> Actually, I got uh, somebody sent me a little that said coffee on it. And it's a light. And it's like, that's all I need to be reminded of more drink, more coffee to the, to this year. But I'll take it as a sign <laughs> for me and Starbucks. But when we look at this phrase, you ask and you don't receive because you ask with wrong motives so that you may spend it for your pleasure. I want to read a quote from Mark Baderman. And some of you might know him. He's a, a Christian teacher. And he's on TV, but, but I like he kind of break this down for me personally. And I'd like to share that with you based on James 4.3. It says, 
God is not a genie in a bottle, and your wishes is not his command. His command better be your wish. Until his sovereign will becomes your sanctified wishes, your prayer life will be unplugged from its power supply. That's a mouthful. I was going to repeat the second part. Until, until his sovereign will becomes your sanctified wishes, your prayer life will be unplugged from its power source. So here's a question. Have you ever felt unplugged? Where was God in this situation? How come this? How come that? Well, I think this answers a question like Mark presented the question is, if we're not connected, if we're not attuned, if we're not div have the divine light in it, we do pray amiss. So when our prayers go, I go, God, 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 without any reasonable connection with the, the source, which is love, which is peace, which is kindness, Jesus says, I come to give you peace and more abundantly. That is actually the stepping stone. That is actually the anchor to all answered prayer. And if we can enter into that place, and if you don't know how, join us throughout this year, attend our retreats, our Zooms, because we're going to break down aspects of how we enter into that place when it's difficult, because don't we pray more when it's more difficult? <laughs> I know I do. So we really do have an essence of what that is in my world. But let's just unplug and stay motivated in what is right, what is wrong in the sense of how we miss the mark. And if we connect with that, I believe divine source shows up, which is our angels, our saints, Holy Spirit. So I think this is a, a great, I love Proverbs 22. It says, direct your children onto the right path. And when they are older, they will not leave it. And to me, it's the, here's a invitation or the motivation. If we, like ourselves, I'm a child. And so I can always be taught new things. And whether it's through the Holy Spirit, whether it's through a confront, whether it's through a family member, or even our enemies tells the truth about me. And it's like, it take, we take ourselves back and go, why did they say that? When we sit with that, we are carriers of the light, but are we passing that truth on to others? What is truth? How do you feel so that what is true? Jesus says, what is truth to Pharaoh? So we identify with if God is our source, which I believe everyone on this call says, yes, if that's true, then we can enter into this beautiful place, an abyss of God, the tenderness of God, the love of God. But as teachers or as brothers or as parents, when we see spiritual truth, then we can pass it on to the next generation, the younger generation. So this light does not go out. And so the question is, good for you to teach your children, your grandchildren, the way sometimes we miss the mark when we're younger because we're still too active in what this world is all about. But when we have time to reflect, we understand, I did teach the good news. I did teach to love one another. I did teach to forgive, to let go, all these aspects of God. So, but with that said, I'm going to turn this over to Bishop Dana, and I'm just going to allow him to, what does carry the light mean to you and your, in, in your purpose? So Bishop Dana. Well, I could give a standard phrase, but I think, can I read something from Ron? Sure. Like this, is out, this is out of his Reclaiming Your Spiritual Power, and it's right to what you're talking about in terms of prayer, Padre. This, this is Ron from page 78, and he's talking about Psalm 23 as a lead in, but he starts talking about what is prayer. He says, we believe that to pray means asking God to do something for ourselves or something else. I have never believed that. I've always understood is when Ron taught prayer is setting a trap for God or seeing yourself as wonderfully made. I think of it as creation. So Psalm 23 is a recognition that everything we need has already been done. And that's the, I'm the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. So it's all statements of what is not what I want. So the recognition is there that we have everything has already been done. As I noted before, Jesus never asked God to do anything to heal those he laid his hands on. Even in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus wasn't asking for anything. He was saying that he would do whatever was in God's will 
even if it wasn't God's own preference. And then Ron went off went on to talk about that in himself. When I applied this realization to my own condition following my stroke, I had to ask myself, do I pray asking God to heal me of the stroke or do I just sit in the stillness and experience God? Keep in mind that when Jesus said, seek first the kingdom and all things will be added to you, he was saying that God already knows our needs and has responded to them before we ever ask. So I realized that was no, well, I was to, no longer to pray for my own healing, but only to remember the co covenant of humility with God that's spelled out in the Bible. Now, I, I can speak to this myself, too, because for in the journey of my illness, which is always something I use as a growth tool, and I got to keep repeating that to many who want to keep hearing that Dana got sick from COVID or this or that. Like, no, Dana had to take a step. And Dana uses illness because he comes from a medical family to take that retreat to go inside. But I found myself doing the same thing. And it was only the other day that I remembered something from 25 years ago. I was so motivated. And instead of asking God for things to do to help me, I asked God to lead me forward. And then unfortunately, my guides appeared. And my guides, unfortunately, pointed me to Buddhism. And I was like, I don't want anything to do with Buddhism. And the next thing they pointed me to Ron Roth. I said, I don't want anything to do with Christianity. They pointed me to therapy, which I'd already decided yeah, maybe I need that. <laughs> but what I realized was that in these, I had to surrender and be willing to allow the rod and staff to appear. And the rod and the staff came through other methods than I would ever imagine, because we want the dinner that we want. We, we go out to a special restaurant to order the dinner that is our favorite, as opposed to like Jesus and Gethlemane. It's like, sometimes you're served up with blue and white and yellow candles. And that's what it's going to be. It's, it's, it's a it's a celebration of the Judaic New Year, or what are we doing truly here? So it was in that state that I said in my last talk that I had a realization of my God saying, you never are really meeting us to be grateful. You're just kind of saying, thank you, God, thank you, God, but not really like looking us in the eyes and seeing these angels. And I realized, well, number one, I thought, am I allowed? I mean, aren't we supposed to be respectful? And it's like, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I teach not to do that. I teach to meet them face on because that's what they want. They want us to rise to that vibration, not be subjugated where they're treating us with little dog treats like we're doing a little special. You know, I rolled over. Do I get a treat now? I behaved. Don't I get the job that I always wanted? Don't I get the relationship I wanted? Don't I get healed of this thing? Instead of understanding, maybe this is the path. And the path has so many doors that could open the horizons to that you think you live in a room. Well, Bobby. Buddhist teacher, Padmasambhava, and you haven't really caught up with him. So I picked up the books. I ordered seven of them. I've been reading nonstop, and they've been shaking my world up. So that's my encouragement to all of you is don't keep praying for something you want to get rid of, because that means you're going to keep it. Open to what God's will is in your life and see where it takes you. Amen, brother. Thank you, Dana. I know we had a little, um, we couldn't hear you for a little while. You froze, but that message comes across loud and clear. Just keep growing, keep loving as we move on to a better and better things. So Bishop Bobby, how did you reflect on Carry the Light? Well, the first thing I always look at is the, the number of the year that we're going to be moving into. So I start trying to get a, a hit on those numbers. And I was very excited when I realized it's a seven year because that means we're going to really truly be walking and talking with the divine this year. It's seven is, a, is the God number in numerology because, and also in the chakra system, because it's the, it's the seventh chakra, it's where you actually talk with God and you've done all your stages of work. You've cleared out the other centers and now here you are Kind of wide open and you're having a one one on one now there's upper chambers that you can still access you're not you're not done yet but at least you're at the the audience place with the divine looking god in the eye exactly like dana said and looking at god in the eye god's gonna know if you're just pulling the chain right or if you're really opening your heart and saying, look, this, I'm at a place where I really need to work on this issue. I made, I made a couple of intentions for myself that are really challenging. And I've already, in three days, I've already violated 
one of them three times. Who does that sound like, right? Peter, thank you for setting the example, because <laughs> I know it turns out well. So I, I didn't worry, but I but it did catch my eye. I, I, I realized I really, really anchored in and I was very sincere. So I know it's a true thing that I want to resolve in the divine. But I also see how strong the tendency is, how strong the the habit is. And so now what I'm doing is not just making an intention for myself, but I'm also making an intention with God to say, help me out because I really want to do this for you. And I really want you to do this for me. It's both sides of the equation. And I know those kind of prayers are very sincere. Divine loves to unite in a campaign of good and, and also bring something that's true to the heart. So I feel really, really good about that. But seven is also broken into two parts. So it's it's two and five. It's 20 plus five. So the, the two is cooperation and balance and the peacemaker. So there is that kind of energy. And then the five is the cons- a little bit of a disciplinarian. So I know I have to be disciplined. I know that's true in order to really reap the reward with the divine. So in some ways, it means that I might have to actually wake up early and do my prayers, even if I want to get them in, if I really want to have the time in, the miles in, I have to I have to find time. And so that often is early in the morning. And so I'm just very much aware that God's actually going to meet me wherever I am. But the more I can meet God where, where I am, the better we're both going to be because it's going to be an honest exchange. So if my eyes are blurry, I just say, my eyes are blurry, but here I am, Lord. If I'm hungry, I'm hungry, but here I am, Lord. And I know the mercy of God is that somehow, if I'm honest, something will open that will bring what I need through the day. It's not going to be, you know, this is never about sadhanas that destroy you. It's sadhanas that empty you so that you can receive more. Wow, my friend. That was brilliant. And your own confession. And I love, you know, how honest you are, Bobby, that we do, we say we're going to make the time. But let's be true. Let's make the time to do that. Because we only have these 24 hours, but my goodness, <laughs> it gets eaten up in a millisecond, especially when we, when we get off course. And like all of you, this year in my world, my heart is set on serving. My heart is set on paying attention to the cues that are going on today in front of me. And it's like, so my neighbor started taking down his Christmas decorations outside and go, well, I wasn't planning on doing that today. I had a different agenda. Then I heard that little, just little nudge, like, go ahead and do it. For three hours, I did that. But it was like, I just want to pay attention because it's too easy to do it my way instead of what the spirit is leading in that. But there's other opportunities. And how many of you, if I, even I'll use the term Christmas, who got to serve you know, a family member, a friend, maybe they were in the hospital, you visited them. I visited and my only aunt left out of 30 aunts and uncles. She's the last one and she's 92, but part of our siblings went and cousins visited last weekend. And it, was, it just brought joy. It's just like if you can shed a light, carry the light to someone else, it makes a difference. But again, then those who are, quote, serving the poor, whether you're serving them by meals or by donating towards those causes, like Celebrating Life, many of you gave generously at the end of the year. And I just say thank you. It tells me where your heart is at. Because it, it propels us to serve even in a greater capacity. But there's those who have COVID, who are, have the flu. We have those who are having surgery, giving them a ride to and from. You know, I had two sisters who had surgery today. So other sisters went and took them to the hospital. But I love the intensity of the intention that goes with that because we're going outside of our paradigm and actually serving and there's a lot of people that need service, including ourselves. We all got tested deeply. We all had to really look at the quality of our relationships and, and our physical health. And so we're saying, okay, we, we, we have, we've put the miles on. So we're going to put that behind us. But what do we need to do to, to really face 2023? Don't take no for an answer. What is meant to come through you must come through you. To me, the 
the joy of sharing what's, you can make a difference, I can make a difference in this world. And somehow we don't know what's in front of us, but if we just act in love and kindness, it, we can change our world, our community, our family, this world. Just takes one light, one love, one promise. Bishop Bobby, what did you see in this? Well, one of the, the main heart-centered images for me was you don't you don't dim your light. You actually, the more you stay with your enthusiasm, your joy, even though others around you may not be there, doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you that you should shut down. But it does mean that you might have to find another way. And so when Sam was able to just not be discouraged, but to 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 walk away from the 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 disappointment and move toward the joy factor, the whole world opened. And then Sam found the spark. Sam found a way to have the heart prayers realized, the family come together, everybody in on it. So it's very exciting. And I really feel like that's that's what seven is. Seven is about rediscovering our innocence, rediscovering our purpose, rediscovering our mission. Lucky lady, lucky seven. It's just a very, very powerful number that if we do not let go of the, the confidence that God has something for us and find the way that to, to keep honing your prayer so that it's an authentic prayer so that it's a heart-centered prayer, so that it's a prayer of confidence and faith, then the, the miracle can come through, not only for yourself, but for everybody around you. When you, when you actually stay with something long enough, it, the, the payoff is that it opens the door for everyone. It's not just for you. It's really sad, Bob. I love that. And it is about for everyone. And I noticed in the chat, Susan says, I just had... We just have to be willing to be the spark. God brings the light. And it's like, yes, it's, we join together, but you, we step out into that beautiful flow. So beautifully said, Bobby. How about you, Bishop Dana? Well, I love the hope in both those messages, but that doesn't match what most of us grew up with. <laughs> so again, quoting a little bit from Ron here, hope alone will not get you over the hump. There has to be self-recognition. And I think what happens is, as you watch the parents deal with it, I love those little concepts of lost time or t times flies and things like that, because we don't understand how much we believe in stuff that's told to us. So as Ron was saying again in his book, as you move deeper within and with God, you probably begin to examine your own psychological programming, perhaps by entering therapy or reading about psychology. Maybe you've realized, for example, that what seemed like inexplicable fits of rage or bouts of depression could actually be traced to how you were raised and how your parents treated you or even how their parents treated them. Some of the behavior implanted within you on the subconscious level 30, 40 years ago may be determining how you respond to certain situations today. And the beauty of this message was in, in the two films we saw is while the parents were distracted in, in their programming or whatever they were lost in, Sam was able to kind of Pray, actually, like pray, like what do I do? And then he entered the channeling world and he got the the true advice of how he could stay connected to God and still have his world be created or to contribute to his society. But we don't know how to do that because we feel we're not allowed to go back and un, un, unwrap old packages of coal that we don't realize are the source of why I feel stuck, the source of why I'm immobile. Why I won't risk? Because I learn to control. So what I want to encourage you is a, as a way, is what Poppy was saying. It's, it's when he was talking about his new resolutions and he's already broken three times. That's because the nervous system is so programmed with repetitive use of the same way that I think lost time. I, I have that one a lot where I'm feeling like I'm behind, I'm behind. Why well, is born behind? And I keep continuing to believe that's true. And so, as I mentioned at the beginning of the call, that's not how this is working this year. I heard what God said to do, and I already got three things done that would usually take me two months to get done in my work field. And I wasn't feeling pushed. It just felt like, like you said, Padre, and you heard, now's the time to bring the, the, the lights down, even whether, whether or not the neighbor did or not, you finally said, no, now's the time. In which case, that's how it always works. We can't just want to be the spark. 
we have to lean back into God to hear how to be the spark. Then the spark comes. And that goes back to a talk I gave about the spark where I kept fighting. For three months, my guides have been telling me to watch the movie Soul. And I wouldn't watch it. And the whole point was, it's a kid's movie, and I don't want to do it. And then I sat there and cried the entire movie. And finally opened the moment the scene came on about the spark, the way that we remember the light that we were born with, not the, the light shade that we've decided to put around us to be a personality in the world and fit in with people and not disturb people and not, not upset people. I know a lot of you live alone. I know you think like, well, I'm not worried about disturbing people. The programming we have from society is, or from our, from our society and from our parents is like, don't expose the bad parts of you in front of other people. Don't, don't yell. Don't fight in front of other people. Don't show any of the bad side. Do it all alone. And then what happens is we end up alone with all of our baggage instead of saying, well, where did the baggage come from? And why can't I just be the light? Why is the baggage pushing down on the light? Well, when I realized I could just focus on the light rather than pray to get rid of the baggage, I don't know, the baggage just started to disappear. So one of those things as I was trying to tie it together is don't pray for what you don't want. <laughs> don't pray for what you do want. Instead, ask how can I be the light again? And then what will happen is you'll be guided to it. Maybe you'll go out and start salsa dancing. Maybe you'll read a book. Maybe you'll decide to, like what Padre said, you'll, you'll suddenly feel this desire to do some service and you just go down and find a place to serve food or reach out to a neighbor and help them shovel their driveway. This is the time to go beyond your restrictive boundaries and risk being a heart, being risk being seen, being risk uh, having mistakes. Hey, I'm the first to point out my my students all know they gave me this gift, but sometimes I turn into the Incredible Hulk. Sometimes I look like I'm just grinning, and sometimes I look like it's about to get really bad. Those are all just reactions I learned to hide the light because I thought I wasn't allowed to have it. And I pretty much think all of us got that same thing. Be a civil servant in society. Find your place. Are you going to college? Are you having kids? But there's nothing about how's the light? Do you remember the light? Do you remember your heart? And then from there, ask, what's your plan from the light? As opposed to, did you sign up for that thing? Are you going to college? Are you going to get married? These are questions that are all conditional programming of what we think we're supposed to do. And I think what I loved about that movie is the child was given the permission to find his own way, to find that truth. And then to bring it back to the family, it was accepted. And, and whether it was by the family or by the town, you would be surprised. It'll really be accepted if you come out as the light. Beautifully said, Dana. <laughs> I think we do. We're afraid to share our life itself, but and we're living alone. So we just get buried into this place and it's conditional only because of the past of what our parents taught or teachers, however it is. During our gathering with the siblings for New Year's, someone said, oh, let's do charades. And everyone went, oh, <laughs> Say, come on, we don't, we never do this. And it's like, and all of a sudden one gets up and they do it. And it's like, oh, and it was catchy. And all of a sudden everybody wanted to do it. But at first there was that resistance. Like, no, I'll be embarrassed. I'll do it wrong. That's all my choices. <laughs> and of course, my first two, I, I, whatever I did, people before me already did it. And why did I miss it? I have no idea. But it became such a, a laugh of just freedom. We can be kids again, just enjoying life in the moment. And is that so wrong? No, it's not. To me, I don't know, well, you probably didn't catch it, but I, there were the two cats and the cats that each had a little badge on. One was tick and one was talk. Oh, and it's just like, oh, I love that clever. Or the yin and the yang. It, we need both in order to like step into this mist of life itself. But how do we actually then share that light? But I really believe it's about present moment and recognizing what Bobby said, this is a seven year. So let's put our expectation out there. It's an intention of just being, being served and being serving others. And we just enter into that place and listening to what our guides of the Holy Spirit said. And I think we will see miracle upon miracle upon miracle happening in our lives. And to me, this is what it's all about. But change can actually be a challenge, as most of you know. 
but especially when it hits our health, our finances, our relationships, we can talk all night on those subjects because we all have them or had them. So how will you enter in now into this brand new year with whatever those conditions are that shows up? How do you maintain your peace? How do you maintain that light? Do we succumb to the woes or do we actually now go back into our relationship with the divine, tap into that first before we even make a decision of how we want to conquer this, change this, whatever it might be. So Bobby, in that statement then, as we enter into this new place and especially with the challenges that have faced us, but also will change face us. You said that you broke a rule or whatever, or what you committed to three times already. And it's like, so how did then you, did you adjust? Okay. The way I adjusted was I realized that this was a campaign I was entering in with God mm-hmm. and I wasn't trying to, to up myself. It wasn't a personal commitment. It was a divine con- commitment. I was saying to God, please join with me and help me in this this goal. Because without you, I can't do it. I already know I can't do it. As, as Dana said, there are these neural pathways and these early trauma patterns that are very deep in all of us. And so I, do, I don't try to better myself. I try to join in with God. I try to b- better the bond that I have with the creator, the creatrix. And when I when I do that, everything opens up. Like immediately I was calm. Like as soon as I realized I had said the word I didn't want to say, the the divine was right there just saying, yep, you're going to do it. Next time you're going to be more aware. And also I started journeying. Every time I would say the word, it opened up a new pathway of consciousness where I could see origin nature. Like here's where it started and there's where it started and here's where it started and that's the fear. So I feel like this truly is a campaign with the divine to be more divine centric. I want the divine, I want to walk and talk and breathe and relate to the divine with everything. You know, I don't want to have an existence without the creator at the center. So it's for me, everything I do now is really to get to get me more God. And then when something comes at me that I is unexpected or is frightening, I, I get God in on it right away. I say, what do you want me to do about this? How do you want me to handle this? How should I respond to this? What do I say? And I really sit down and pray and get some guidance. And then I enter in and then I report back. Okay, well, I did what what I heard and it didn't quite go the way I thought it might. And the divine says, well, then try this or do that. So it's it's about finesse. So I think this seven opportunity here is to, to emancipate all of us this year. I know that's true in oneness. We're working really at this, we're at this breaking point of mass awakening and, and emancipation. And I think it's true just in the generic consciousness of all humans because every messenger i've i've seen in the last few weeks have basically been saying the same thing this is a breakthrough year this is an exciting year this is the year we've been waiting for for quite a long time so i'm excited you sound excited (laughs) you're living the excitement bobby very well said i love this comment that laura finmore talked about in the chat room she says i thought sam was a little girl and that Chick-fil-A created a video with a fluid child is a 2023 miracle. And I believe that. I listened to this video many times because I wanted to get the gender correct. But I heard at once so the parents say he. So I thought, well, Sam must be a he, but she looks like a she. But I, there we are entering into this brand new place. And thank you for pointing that out, Laura, because I really believe there's the new beginning happening. No judgment, just entering into a place of love and let that spark lead us because we have a lot of, quote, dark areas that we need to clean up in our lives, in my life. And I'm just going to allow that spark to lead me to a better place, a better me, a better world. And if we can hold that in a higher state, I think we'll be, God will be well pleased with me. Comment, Bishop Dana. I can also relate to this through, since Thanksgiving to now, I had two more health crises of different nature. 
in a, in a way that helped me go deeper in that I've ever done, gone before. And that was a couple of days after Thanksgiving, I ended up waking. Well, I was still awake, but it was close to midnight. And all of a sudden, everything got distorted. My brain, my head hurt and I started vomiting and it, uh, for hours, for hours. So there was nothing left. I thought I was breaking ribs. And that time I kept going, OK, God, what do you want? But I realized what was happening is in when I was a kid, I got the flu a lot and I used to get sick throwing up was a habit for me in that way. That's the furthest I get from God when I'm that sick. Even though I got sick to slow down my parents, I realized it's not helpful to be sick and lose God. So I thought I'd figured that out. And I thought it was food poisoning. One week later, I go out for a good meal. and It happens again all night long. Oh my God. So this time I asked deeper and I heard, it's time to let go of the fear of illness, fear of death, fear of everything. And in that place, that's when I started hearing, what am I, why am I not doing what I know how to do? Why am I going with these old bad habits when I know I have trained myself just like a musician? I know how to get back. Why don't I practice it again? And what I learned was this is all part of a bigger phase. The thing was, I just can't eat rich food like that anymore. It's how I approached it. It's not that I can't have it. It's how, just like praying, how we approach things matters. Creation is everything. So prayer is everything you do. It's not when you sit like this. That's not prayer. That's begging. Prayer is every action you take, every movement you make. And next thing you know, Sting's going to walk in here and, oh, hi. Yeah, could you come in and talk? No, it's not here. <laughs> but, you know, that's, I always heard that song as God singing to me. Every move you make, every bow you take, I'm watching you, I'm there for you. And that's what I got to remember. So what came to me was a phrase to cut through the garbage. And I did it while I was sick, while I was throwing up, and I felt Holy Spirit be there. And it was just, be with me. Not save me, not make me well, be with me now. And I would feel it. And then it didn't matter how bad I was. And this is how it'll be when we're in our sick beds, when we're dying. We have to make a decision about where we're going. And we have to decide to really connect. Otherwise, you're going to go in just all over the place and GPS isn't going to help you. So my sense is, what's a phrase of positivity, of action, of creation with you and God? Know me, God. Hold me, God. Be with me, God. Something that's now, as, as Padre said, it, it's in the now moment when you're saying it, it's like, when we pray, we pray for the future. Can you heal me? And then like what Bobby said, it doesn't pan out the way I thought it was going to be. Well. God is not responsible for healing me. God is only, he's already healed me. I have to decide to step into it. So that means in the now moment, I have to decide to meet God now, regardless how bad it is. And I have to say, I'm still with you, God. Just like Jesus in Gethsemane, we, we have these moments when we realize, oh, this isn't a place to have God, or now I'm going to beg really badly instead of like, no, no matter how hard, no matter how weird, and no matter how good it is, be with me now, God. I love that setup, Dana finding a word, a phrase that we can hold on to as we enter in. Some that in the chat room, be in me, God, walk with me, God. I love these. These are rich concepts that personally, if you have that decree, that promise, it's going to change your life. I was talking with Dean Braxton, who was part of our fall retreat last year. Yeah, I think it was. <laughs> I think it was. Anyway, and he was telling me how grateful he was to be with Celebrating Life, and he continues to pray for Celebrating Life. And he, he was sharing with me in coming in 2023, this year, he has 168 events already scheduled. I went, oh, my God. <laughs> I was afraid to enter in 2023. And he has Godzillion already. And it's like, they just build my faith. And it's like, step into it without fear. Because God is there for me, for celebrating life, but also being a light to others that there's so many out there that are looking for what we have. And that really is that relationship with the divine, but also the healing prayers, the decrees that come when we're in alignment with heaven. And to me, that's what that seven is about, is being aligned with heaven and earth. And if we can stay there, these miracles will manifest as best as we know how. And as we enter into this new place, we'll enter into a brand new place that we never knew existed. But God awaits us because he's already created that form for you and I, for all of us to not only be healed, 
but to be sanctified, to be loved, to be changed, be renewed in that one moment, a holy moment. And so that's your moment tonight, but it also will be your moment throughout 2023. So other comments? Otherwise, Bobby, we're going to enter into that beautiful place. Nice. I would have, my only other comment is one of my favorite scripture passages is, see, I am doing a new thing. And even us old dogs, a new thing can happen. So I don't want to hear that I'm too old, I'm too sick, I'm too jaded, because it does, it's not true. That's a choice. That's a choice. But the truth is, God says, see, I am doing a new thing. And that new thing is going to happen right here, right now. So bring on the old and take out the new, because it's, this is what we're, we're here for. I love that, my friend. I love, well, I love a lot of scripture, but God creates everything new every morning. So let's enter into that place. Even if we have to get up early in order to enter into that place, doesn't matter. She, she, God is awaiting us. And I just want to be loved beyond measure. So, so why don't we enter into prayer for all those here who are present besides your loved ones, your families. Many have already sent emails for me about praying for certain situations and you know what's on your heart. You know what that desire is to heal, to restore. So let's just enter in. I'm going to just do some, what I think the Holy Spirit desires uh, topically in a sense of praying for, and then we just might just give words to others, but we'll see where the flow happens tonight as we enter to that special place here and now. Be with me, God, now. And as you decree that in your own life, in your own home, you just say, come Holy Spirit. Have your way. Have your way. Make a way for that fullness to manifest in their lives, in my life, in this world lives. And I'm just going to first pray for all those who are suffering with COVID, flu, sickness, disease, anyone who's scheduled for surgery or just had surgery, just place your hand on your heart and we just decree God's love, God's health into your body, into your immune system, into the atmosphere and let it recharge God's light and love and see the positive happening in your life and in their lives. And we just allow the Holy Spirit to lead us into that place of fulfillment, health, and healing. And your immune system now becomes strong, healthy, and whole. And the atmosphere of your home or the workplace, it gets changed now because the spark has already gone forth. It's already been expanding and newing and growing in. And it not only changes your health, their health, their healing, but also their consciousness where we We become what we desire. And that desire is the the blessings of God, the love of God. I thank you, O Lord, our God, for that great grace. Bishop Bobby. Lord, I'm calling your attention now to those who are finding their spark to help them have the confidence, the strength, the surety, the wisdom, the, the, the guidance and the grace to walk this spark into every situation of their lives, knowing that this spark co- comes from the mother, father in heaven, mother, father, God, and that it will be, it's an, it's an anointing. It's an, it's an ordination of sorts and that it will be magnified as it is applied. So thank you, God, for magnifying every application of this spark made in innocence and in wholeness and sweetness and goodness in kindness and creativity you are a great god and i just totally know that all of those beings who are stepping up right now opening their heart to carry this spark forward you will be there too and this is a proclamation and and a knowing i thank you god with all my heart for stepping up with each of us so that we can step out in your name Amen. Said beautifully decreed, Bobby. Bishop Dana. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to open the gates for all those today here with us and not with us, but tapped in in spirit, that are facing challenge in their life in any form, physical, chemical, emotional, mental, spiritual. 
to instead see that challenge as an opening, a doorway, to challenge the challenge instead of thinking it's too much for me. And the Holy Spirit show all these beings how to simplify and how to hear that spark that will lead them through the door, just like that little boy when he kept hearing no, found a way to open the door to the time room. As well as for those who are fully committed, what's that mean? Holy Spirit, I ask you to guide them through the steps of commitment such that committing is an every moment action, not a once and done and then carry it around with you. I'm hoping now that as you bring in this idea of commitment, it blossoms into a rose garden, understanding that commitment is not just one yes, it's a repetitive yes. It's so many yeses that brings in that blessing of you into the room. And so now I'm asking Holy Presence to come into each and every person's room, house, car, wherever they're seated now. But more importantly, what they're truly seated in is their body. And I ask Holy Spirit to touch their heart, to touch their mind. And then at the end, touch the affliction. Because first must come the heart and then the mind, and then the body will follow. Holy Spirit, we know this is true and presence. I can feel you here strongly now as you're making changes in our lives, in our will, and in our purpose. Amen. Amen. Really sensing the spirit moving, guiding the angels. There's a there's an activity happening in this portal called Celebrating Life right now. And I know many of you are experiencing that. I really sense the I want for those who, and I'm going to take a a lead from Dana. Dana talked about in the very beginning when he said hello, he talked about like for Laura being healed of her eye situation. You know, that was the decree that went out there. And I just want to follow through anyone who has a a disease, a challenge that, especially with pain, it doesn't matter what part of the body doesn't matter. Maybe it's a pain of a relationship using the, the spark. So I just want you to tap the, the screen. There's my hand. And you're just going to connect with the hand of God. And as you connect with the hand of God, that spark comes from me, goes through to you, to your physical f- physicality. And just like electricity, that sparks begin to move into your nervous system right now and heal and restore every afflicted area of the body. Every nerve ending, be strong, healthy, and whole. Every muscle be full now, supporting, renewing, and restoring. Come Holy Spirit, let your healing presence begin to flow. I decree healing from the heavenly voices, the angels right now, ascending and descending to the new paradigm of your health, your healing, and restoration. I thank you, O Lord our God, there's someone who has a a major challenge on their hand financially with another person or an organization. Let Let that spark begin to go before you right now and change the situation right now in the name of Jesus. For it's that light has come, the light has come. For your glory, Lord, let your healing presence, for Lord, Let the spark, that one spark in her eye be healed. I thank you, O Lord, our God. Just sense that energy of the Holy Spirit, just transcending, renewing, restoring for the fullness of God is, it's that like breaking bread. We begin to now share that with not only our hearts, but those who are in need in our family, our friends, our coworkers. We just release that now in the name of Yeshua Jesus, I pray. Amen. Then Bishop Bobby, if you have anything else that the Holy Spirit is asking you to pray for, and then also Bishop Dana. Lord, I'm calling your attention now into the hearts and lives of each person who is ready, willing, and able to enter into divine relationship. There are so many people who have voiced a desire to be united in love, and I pray now from a very hallowed space in my inner being that these prayers be answered in the fullness of grace let these divine relationships come into manifest form let it be easy 
let it be joyful, and let it be useful. There's only the opportunity to grow ever more in God. And so let these relationships be that principle in action. Grow together in God. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your guidance and wisdom. I just want to call out a, several conditions that will be amongst you or in some of the prayer boxes uh, requests they've seen. But I've seen a lot of body issues. So Holy Spirit, please treat the body now. Digestion, correct and align. Nervous system, calm and be in uh, flow. We're asking for feet and bones, ligaments to come in alignment. Spine to come in alignment. Neck come in alignment because again sometimes the uh, whole body's like a, a rope you twist the top and the bottom twist too <clears throat> we ask lower back issues to be solved as we bring in more of your presence and more of your abundance we ask um, your ability for the body to receive healing for the body to receive the healing through the medicine that they're taking through the treatments that they're going through that it actually has the spark within it rather than somehow we keep thinking that these things are foreign and not god made everything's from god we also ask for problems with hearing to be rectified and open, the ears open to hearing at least internally to God's direction rather than just hearing a high-pitched screen, <laughs> screeching. L listen past that to hear the words and direction of God. I'm also asking for the eyes to open, for the eyes to be able to see, for swelling in the eye socket to reduce, pressure in the eye to reduce, asking for brain neurology to come into a slower pace for those that are dealing with either uh, rapid issues or feeling slow in the brain. The brain chemistry comes into balance. Asking for from outward, in the outward space that affects our body, when we realize we're taking on different types of energies from our surroundings, whether it's microwaves or cold or viruses or whatever. It's about understanding that none of these things are bigger than me, bigger than God. So I ask now for this balancing to come out and realize that this is an opportunity, an opportunity to know you even better. Thank you, Holy Spirit. By your grace, amen. That was an avalanche of blessings, my friend. Beautifully said. You know, I'm picking up the some of you on this call. You said maybe in the last month, week, maybe today, what is life about? What do I do? I want to move forward again. Some of us are just stuck in that place and can't see the light. And hey, I was there. I understood that very clearly. But I also know there are many out there that ask the same question. And so I just want the Holy Spirit to break through that spark, that light that breaks the darkness area. And I just ask the Holy Spirit to just bring passion back to your life and allow the light to show an area that you specifically have a gift for and now extend that to the others because we need to step forth beyond our stuckness in a sense and we need to step into that promised land the year this year 2023 is a seven it's a promised land so we're stepping now into this grace but you have to let go of your fear and just let god lead you into this beautiful place that he's prepared for you the scripture says so I break every fear, every doubt, every self-esteem, that low self-esteem that has hindered you in the past, but not today, because the Holy Spirit is like a roaring lion and says, come, follow me, take that step in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Bishop Bobby. Lord, I call upon your resurrection power now to wake up these sleeping souls who have been so battered by circumstances, so locked in their minds, so afraid by their past and the torments that they've experienced. Cast all that away now. Anoint their souls for a new day now. Bring on the light now because this is your day and this is your your time of resurrection being shared in each and every one of us. You know, call us into the life that we know as the Christ light. Call us into the life that we know as the creator, the creatrix. Call us into the light that has the all that is, every promise, every hope, every dream and desire being remembered in every cell of our body throughout all time and space. God, with you, all things are possible. You are the resurrector. You are the creator. You are the great I am. And so I thank you now 
for this anointing to each and every one on this call and anyone who hears this call to God. Amen. Oh, the beautiful prayer is happening. Bishop Dana. <laughs> Raphael, as you have shown me the steps of being authentic, being authentic has led me into authority, your authority, to hear you, to act with you, from you. I ask you to bless that authority of authenticity, of mastery upon everyone on this call and everyone listening later. Much as we will watch an athlete who we think is amazing at what they can do, we forget that they practice. They practice the mechanics of understanding what they do. It's the same with Jesus. He understood the mechanics of prayer. He understood the mechanics of healing. He understood the, the, the mechanics of being alive, of what real life is about. And thus, I ask you to bring that true mastery to all of us, that we can remember you in the moment, that we can have you on call, on tap, at any time, in any way to understand it is not gloomy. It is not upsetting. It is simply what is. And what is, is me being with you here. Amen. Amen. I'm so enjoying these declarations, these healings. It's really clear in the atmosphere, at least in my world, in my home, in your home, your hearts, of course. But it is what we're doing is speaking truth to your spirit. Then the body responds because that's the spark. We, we allow God's light to just enter in. Brian McGill said this statement. Meeting another human being is always a sacred event. If we can carry that into 2023, meeting a human being is always a sacred event. Discovering who they are, discovering the spark they have that will light your world and this world. We take off these colored glasses and just enter into that mystery tonight our world, our year will be sevenfold. A bounty, blessings, what some people are faced with finances, what's the world, the challenges, the inflation that's going on. It just seems we're being squeezed, so to speak. Maybe we're being squeezed in order to actually feel that very presence of where God resides within us and allow it to come forth because it's kind of been hidden in our world. We've been trying to do that work on our own. And it's like God says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So let's enter into that spark tonight as we begin our prayers, as we end our day in prayer, that allow that light to carry us into our dream state, but also into the new beginning tomorrow. There's such a blessing in who I am, who you are. And just allow that grace now to just transpire to inspire you and the people around you. And I know there's many of you that when you go back to work tomorrow, people are going to say, something's different about you, or, or you weren't perfume or a different color. It's where you were, and you were with God, with us tonight as we enter into that place. So as each of us lays a hand on our hearts as a point of contact, God knows you personally as a beloved daughter, as a beloved son. And just let, let's enter into that grace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the light of God. And allow that to expand in your world right now. Into your present situation. Trusting the footsteps, the whispers of heaven that has the answer to your prayer to your healing, to your release as we enter into the promised land. I thank you, O oh Lord, our God, for your rich blessing tonight on their lives, on our lives, on this ministry, on our world, in this country. Just settle within us your peace that passes all understanding. And if I can ask the Bobby and Dana, for a closing prayer, a closing thought as we enter to this sacred space and hold it dear to our hearts. So, Bishop Bobby. 
Thank you, Padre. May you be very dearly blessed this year. This is a very, very powerful time to re to have a birthday blessing. So happy birthday. God bless you. My prayers are with you. And Lord, all I can say is I really ask that you walk and talk with me in every single way this year, that you help me to shine a light that is an example of authentic love, authentic light, authentic goodness. And where I need correction, show me correction, show me mercy, show me grace. Where I need strength, where I need to step up, show the way and show the method in which to accomplish things in a great way in your name, in your holy name. Amen. It was my birthday. <laughs> Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> Bishop Dana. I just wanted to offer a challenge to everyone because to let more light in to be to to create room for the spark to grow you have to make room for it so one of the techniques that i teach at fsd is at the new year i'd say over the next month find one area of your house your closet your dresser drawer your bookshelf whatever and what i do is according to my new vow and commitment to you god what here is aligned for me and what isn't and then I have a method of stay, go, or go, go. Stay means it's a line. Fine. Go means it goes into a box because I'm not quite sure I'm ready to get rid of it. So I'll put it over in the closet and probably three months from now, it will go somewhere. Go, go. It goes all the way directly to somewhere to be used like tomorrow. In which case, then you're making a physical statement in your life saying, Oh, yeah, instead of keeping triggering myself, because every time I look at the book, I remember being in sixth grade. And yeah, I remember how my teacher made fun of me. And, you know, we don't realize how much it stimulates the unconsciousness when we want to stimulate the spark. So it's about clothes, books, jewelry that support your the presence and the spark within you to grow. And thus, everything that's heavyweight should be gladly released and just given away. Just give it away freely and know that God gives you more. As I walk through the valley, it's always given to me. And I don't mean the negative stuff. I mean, as I go through the valley, everything's prepared. The food, the way, the weather, everything is prepared. I love the response to our abilities of just listening to what needs to be let go of. So something brand new can come in. And I was just looking at, I have a spot in this room that's a little cluttered. And I just heard the Holy Spirit say, it's time to clean that out. Even though it's a little spot, well, that spot could be in God's light, God's love. So I hear you, Dana. I hear you, Ron. <laughs> I'm going to do that for sure. So, But I love, I love this group. I love each of you. As you take one of these principles or multiple principles that we learned tonight, apply them to your life. I don't know if you share with us by email, texting, however you communicate with us. Please share your healings or your challenges or your miracles that have happened. And I know I've sent our community, the monks that ordained, the students, the, the full schedule for next year. But if, if you're on our, our CLM Google list as a family, uh, I'll send that out tonight. But if you're not on that, just email me and we'll put you on our Google list for family. So given all those who are nearest to celebrating life, that full schedule right now. That eventually will show up on our website, but at least you'll know that you can plan ahead to attend any of our services. So, and I just say, thank you, God, for your living presence tonight. I thank you, God, for every person whose face I've seen, whose image that you have given me that I pray for on a daily basis. Thank you, God, for the release of your divine energy, your divine energy that creates miracles in all your people's lives. And as we enter into the 2023, may it be glorious. May it be one in the spirit. May our lives dramatically change as our heart changes, as our rhythm changes, as the atmosphere change, as we enter into life itself without fear, but trusting God and God's purpose, divine purpose for your life, for my life. And I bless you. May the good Lord bless and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you, his son, his daughter, and grant you peace, shalom, in all the areas of your life. 
and I bless you as your Padre, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Namaste, my friends. Happy New Year. We'll see you on the next Zoom or in-person retreat. Thank you, Dana. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Miriam, for hosting us. Mary Kay, be blessed, be well. God bless you.